This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, everyone. Good to see so many here to celebrate. Remember, next week is Palm Sunday already. So um, we are going to have communion. Those who are at home, get your elements ready so that you can um, share with us in communion. It will be a little different than what we usually do, but we will make it work. So um, instead of passing everything, we'll have everything ready for you. So um, good news, Nancy and Larry are home. So um, her immune system is still pretty much nothing. Um, so she, they're just home and are thankful and grateful to be home. Um, she will have to wait a while to get her uh, COVID vaccine, and actually he said she would have to have all her childhood vaccines over again. So um, I just think that's wonderful news. Happy birthday to Stacy, who had a birthday yesterday. <laughs> Is there anything else? If nothing else, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you are with each and every one of us today. Let us feel your presence. Open our hearts and our minds to hear your word, to hear the grace that you give to each one of us freely. Lord, be with all those who are listening in this day. May they, too, hear your word. Lord, we thank you for every blessing and all the grace and mercy bestowed upon us. In your holy and precious name, amen. Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Please listen for the words of the prayer of confession. Compassionate and gracious Lord, forgive us when we falter on this Lenten pathway. When the road ahead seems too uncertain and we are afraid, we admit that following Jesus is not an easy task. Jesus requires us to be willing to make the ultimate commitment of our whole lives. And we hesitate and we hold back. Draw us back to you, Lord. Give us confidence and courage to face the future with hope. Let us pray, place our trust in you that the message of peace and mercy and grace you have given to us through Jesus Christ may be offered to others through our own witness to your healing mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. God's grace was given to you and I, a free gift. God knows that we have trouble in this life, but he gives us the new covenant, the covenant of Jesus Christ and his blood shed for you and me. So today, know that you are forgiven. Amen. The scripture I chose for today, and I don't have my Bible, because um, I'm thinking there's one little girl who wants to be a preacher too, and I don't know where she put my Bible. <laughs> so, I did, I did write it all down, so. 
It comes from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declared the Lord, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declared the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will know. They will all know me. For the least of them to the greatest, declare the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. Here is the word of the Lord. As I thought about that scripture and God's covenant, God's laws for you and I, and how he replaced that with the new covenant, the only thing I could think of was his grace, his amazing grace. And I know that Dennis likes to have music, so I'm going to sing Amazing Grace for you guys. Close your eyes again. Hear those words that are so familiar to us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves us. 
this week, I wonder, do we realize in our lives the mercy and the grace that God has given each and every one of us? In the scripture, God had put rules, covenants into place for the Israelites to follow, to live by. But did they? We have those same rules and laws and covenants today if you read the Old Testament. But do we follow them? If we truly sit and read the Ten Commandments, I'm not sure that there is one of us here that could raise our hand with confidence and say, I have not broken God's commands. The commands that he set in place for each of us. As we continue to look at our lives and our journeys. This journey that we're on here on this earth. Our desert. And we prepare ourselves for a better and an open relationship with Jesus Christ. As we hope for a life beyond this one. We need to remind ourselves that no matter how hard we try. Or where we think we are in knowing God. Each one of us falls short of the glory of God. As I said, we failed God, but he keeps loving us. He keeps loving us. As I think about the Ten Commandments, they were etched in stone. When you think of something etched in stone, you think it's pretty permanent. But Jesus said, or God said, I will put it on your heart. I will write it on your heart and in your mind. A piece of stone you can move away. You can hide. You don't have to look at it. But when it's put on my heart, when it's put on your heart, it's there with you each and every day. A permanent carving for each one of us. And God chose the new covenant of grace and glory to replace all covenants with the new covenant. At the Last Supper, he says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood, the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. In Jeremiah, they're prophesizing about Jesus' blood, Jesus' life for you and I. God's grace is so amazing that he gave his son for you and I that we know and we put it on our hearts and we remember it in our minds that Jesus' blood was shed not only for you but for me for our generations ahead for our generations past. Written on our hearts. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we allow our hearts and minds to be changed, what Christ did for you and I will always be not written on stone or paper, 
where we can walk away, where we can forget, with God's grace and love. It will be with us, in us, around us, and through us, throughout our life. It's a change. As I think back in my life, I was a little bit stubborn. I don't know if you guys would believe that. And I really didn't let too many people in. But I see the change as I have written God's love on my heart. I have seen myself change. And I know you have all seen yourselves change when you open your heart to Christ. Change for the better. With God's grace and love with us. A sinner dependent not on what we can do but what God can do in us in order to not only wear his love in our heart but to wear his love on our sleeves to share it with one another forgiven you and I for that new covenant promised you and I for that new covenant of life beyond what we know in the selfish and evil world but you and I have the grace the love and the mercy of Jesus Christ Amen The offering plate is in the back. I'm sure many of you have been here, so that it is in the back. Um, we don't plan on passing it for some time. So um, if you want to stand, I will play the doxology, and then we will pray after that. your grace, your mercy. We thank you for the blessings we all receive, big and small, each and every day. Lord, we thank you for the ability to worship in this church, a church that we all call home, a church where we feel comfortable and we feel your Holy Spirit. Let us give back to you in, in financial, in gifts, and talents in order to keep this home for each and every one of us, not for our glory, but your glory. Amen. First, the people. Like I said, it's kind of nice to be able to do some praise for Larry and Nancy this week. Praise for birthdays. It seems like the world may be getting a little more hopeful for us these days. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, 
as we move through this life. This life we sometimes call a desert. Where the world sometimes is chaotic, selfish. Where the world sometimes puts you and hides you until they need you. Lord, we know that you have written on our hearts, written that Jesus Christ gave his life for each and every one of us. Each and every one who says, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Nothing more, nothing less than that, Lord. No, we're not easy at following the rules. And those rules and those covenants are there to help guide us. But you know, Lord, that we are sinners. But sometimes we say, well, my sin isn't as bad as that. And that's why you brought your son to walk this earth among us sinners. That is why you sacrificed your one and only son, because of your grace and your mercy and your love for each and every one of us. So let us wear that on our hearts. Let us wear that on our mouths. Let us wear that on our sleeves and proclaim, proclaim you, proclaim that our life would be nothing without you in it. Today we're at a point of being hopeful, Lord, in a year that has been hard for all of us. Hopeful to see that People are getting vaccinated. Hopeful that we can once again sit together in fellowship and talk and laugh and sing. Hopeful, Lord. We know that Nancy and Larry have had a rough, rough, rough road lately. But Lord, the words when he said we are at home, that things are moving ahead, gives each one of us hope. Continue to be with them as she continues to heal. And we will praise you the day she is able to sit in a pew and celebrate you with us. Lord, we thank you for Stacy. We thank you for who she is. We thank you for her being here with us, a sister in Christ. As we celebrate her birthday, Lord, lift her up, let her know how important she is. Let her know how loved she is. Once again, Lord, be with each person here who came to glorify you this day. Be with those at home who are celebrating with us, who are hearing your word. Continue to be with our churches and our communities as we see hope, as we know your grace and mercy for each and every one of us. And today we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, we look inside ourselves, and we also need to look at God and realize how much he loves us, how much grace he has bestowed upon you and I as sinners. And be hopeful in this world to come and to know of the forgiveness that was given for each and every one of us. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.